this uh, Excel exercise is essentially trying to be analogous to a task you might have if you were developing psychological reports uh, for a large number of people, um, either because you're getting people on an ongoing basis or, or whatever. And the idea is that each person would get their own report. And you know, there's all sorts of things you might include in a report. Um, there's their raw scores, their percentiles, maybe scale scores. You might have text to describe you know, that's very high, low, medium, like a, a transformation of the percentile into, into text. Um, there's all sorts of things you might include. You might include a, a graph with their position on a distribution. Um, so what, what this does is essentially takes uh, a, a data set where one row is a person and allows you to generate a report for one individual and allows you to cycle through those individuals um, quickly. So you can imagine this would be useful. Um, in a, um, yeah, a reporting context. So um, we've got um, a description of the personality test that the participants did. So we've used it before. It's a 25 item measure of um, Big Five and there's a few demographic questions in there as well. And in Excel, um, We've got uh, the, the information about the test under BFI, so it's got all the items and how they're scored and so on. And then we have the raw data, so that's got an ID for each person. And presumably in some software, I mean, you could do it in Excel, I suppose, uh, but this is assuming the scale scores have already been calculated and we've already calculated a percentile relative to some norms. So we've got um, the raw scores for each person for the big five, and then we've got their percentiles. So this person's scored higher than 21.2% of the, the, the norm sample. It's very low on conscientiousness, 7.1. Let's make it a bit Let's make it bigger. Yeah, so, um, yes, as I say, you could, Add up scores in Excel using, you know, um, you know, you could go equals, you know, or get the average or reverse. You can do all that sort of um, stuff, but let's just assume that that's being calculated in SPSS or R, and you've exported this file into Excel for report generation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and create a, a customized report for each individual. Um, and to do that, we're essentially going to uh, look up their ID and extract certain bits of information and, and place them in the profile. So, for example, we'll create a sheet called Profile. Um, and what we'll do is we'll have a spot to put their user ID. Um, now, with Excel, when you're writing formulas, you can reference like cells like B1 and C2 and D3. But that's not quite as reliable because um, sometimes these things can change. So one nice thing is to actually name cell references so you can refer to that in a formula. So I'm going to call this cell B1 user ID. And that way, you know, if I put some text in it and I say is it equals user ID, is that right? Yeah, there we go. I can get that. Um, and it wouldn't matter if that moved around and so on. Okay, uh, we're going to create a few other. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you want to change the ranges? Um, I think it's, is it is it names or something? Yeah. Names. So yeah, you can go to names or name or whatever it's called, and there you can either delete or change the change the cell reference in there. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going to create a couple of other uh, named ranges. Um, first, I'm going to create one that represents all the data. So I'll just call this like data table or something. And there's probably a few other ways of doing this. You could probably set up a table as well, but I'm going to do it this way, which I don't know if it's the best way, but it's one way. Uh, I'll call this like the variable names, and this will make it easier for me to um, 
look up IDs in the table and select a particular column. Um, there are probably other ways of doing it. But. So I've highlighted all that. Um, and so if I, yeah. So, so say we wanted to bring in uh, some demographic data and maybe their age. We could maybe make it a bit prettier. prettier. And maybe we wanted to have their personality um, profile on um, on the big five down here or something like that with their, I don't know, their, their scale score and their percentile or something like that. So one thing we can do to make sure that we're selecting user IDs that are only in the list is to apply validation. Um, so that's a handy thing in general, but if you want to validate your data, in other words, limit what's allowed to be entered, uh, you can do data uh, validation. Um, sorry, I'll and if you select a, a list here, you can select a source for that, and we can select all the, the IDs. And whoop, lo and behold, there they are. There, so we can just select, the, they'd be like our participant IDs, or it could be the name of someone like John Smith or whatever. Um, so that's our ID. Um, just make that one more bigger, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, I, I had to look up this myself when I was kind of working out, well, how do you select out? Um, so let's select one of the people. How do we pull out uh, their gender from the data table based on their user ID? Um, so the main way to uh, kind of access so say you know their ID and you want to extract some information from another column, the usual way is to use what they call a V lookup. So it's a vertical lookup. Um, so if you go equals V lookup, um, we select the lookup value. So that's, you know, John Smith, or in this case, participant 61617. So that's the lookup value, the value you want to access. Then you have um, the actual table, where the first column is the ID variable, and there's a bunch of other columns with information you want to pull out of. And so I think we, we could select that range manually, but we've named it, so we can just go data table. Oops, how do we do it? Type complete. Maybe I'll just type it. Okay. Then we have the column index number. So we could um, go into the raw data and see which column has, is gender. And it might be column 7, 10, 20. It's a bit scary because what if you added an extra column, everything would get out of sync. So um, one way of getting the right number is to look at that um, set of uh, headers and work out which number corresponds to the name of the variable. So this is this match thing. Um, so the variable, I looked at it before, it was called gender f, that's just what it was called. Um, and it's, we wanna find which number that is in, um, in the list of variable names. I think this false is sort of important. Um, it's something to do with partial matching, which I always use false anyway. <laughs> so yeah, what that that match thing did, if we can just pull it out. Um, is it just says 31. That's all that match function returned. And if we were to look at this and go along, um, in fact, if we were to, if we were to go along, hopefully, if I'm right, yeah, so 31. So it's just, it's just a bit more robust than us just typing in 31 in case we added or deleted a column or whatever. 
So the match function is to told us which column that's in. Maybe you could do it with data tables and it would be better, I'm not sure. Okay, so we've, we've got their gender um, and we could do the same thing for age. Um, so we just change this to um, age. They're 16. Um, this is, you could also even make it a bit prettier. You could say something like, uh, and years old. I don't know if that's nice, but yeah, you can pretty it up a bit like that. All right, so now we want to get the scale scores and the percentiles. So um, we just check the variable names there and I can copy and paste them in. Um, so if I paste it regularly, I can put, put these variables on, on the side so it, instead of having to type them into the equation, I can actually reference them. So I can paste them like that, but that's not quite as nice. So maybe let's, you can paste special, it's quite nice uh, getting to know all these features, but we can transpose that. So it's, oh, that's not what we want. Um, what's going on there? Transpose. And maybe we'll create it more like a table so that the, that's kind of how we want the table to lay out. So we've got the scale scores and then the percentiles. So we could just then reference those values um, from this little table over here. So we'd probably want to capitalize it and do a few things like that. But they're the values. And then we will, uh, instead of typing it in directly, we could reference those, uh, that information over there. So, and hopefully, um, that's starting to look a bit good. Check that it worked, but I'm pretty sure it is. So 61617 is the, the first row, I think, yep. And supposedly they have uh, scores of four and 2.8. Um, and that's what we have over here. So yeah, we could then maybe pretty it up a bit. Um, you know, standardize the number of decimal places, something like that. Maybe um, add some attractive bordering or whatever it is we think might be good. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of just a really basic kind of um, personality profile. You know, you could do a lot more with graphs or, or so on. Um, we could even pull in the, um, the individual items. So we could get the individual scale scores for those if we wanted to. Um, so the variable names are A1, A2. Um, just paste just the values. And we could say, well, this is the text, and this is the response, and we could use the same lookup feature to, um, what was it, get A1, and then that would be, so it's just pulling out, um, the response they gave. Yeah. Um, I guess if you're going to be more sophisticated, you could convert that to, um, um, you know, if it's one, strongly disagree, two, disagree, and so on. But yeah, um, that's just sort of a starting point. Um, so yeah, let's just check it all. That like, kind of looks good. So we've completed their first profile. Okay, that's the second person's, third person's, whatever. And it's all changing, so you can then paste that in or print it out or, or something like that. And I guess you could even get more fancy and write a macro that exports everyone or something like that. But that's, that's another level, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I guess the main aim of that was to kind of show how you could um, develop a kind of custom report for a personality profile and kind of show how you could use, you know, VLOOKUPs, uh, a data source, and, you know, a bit of formatting and so on to kind of get something that might be um, useful. Mm.